Ciao a tutti! Welcome to another behind the scenes video. In this part I will focus more on the preparation for printing and if you didn't watch already please watch the previous episode, it will make a more sense of what I'm doing right now. So let's start. After importing all the parts I'm scaling them down to the real printing size which is one eighth of a scale. I'm choosing the orientation that will avoid the necessary support and avoid the enclosed areas that will create a suction or capping effect. That can result in layer lines and failed prints. Of course, there are examples where you need to anticipate how supports will affect printing. And nice example would be this leg. By adding a few holes, I will allow air and resin to flow freely during printing. I hear you asking, Gino, but why? As soon as I start adding supports on the bottom, I will basically create a barrier and obstruct the resin and air to move freely, and that can create a capping effect. But when it comes to the parts that you'll need somewhere along the printing, I am referring to sleeves connecting with the jacket, I'm always choosing the best possible orientation for smaller parts first, in this case sleeves. They also need to be connected to the main supports of the jacket to achieve some rigidity during printing. When it comes to the rest of the model, if I am unable to place all the supports on the inside of the jacket, I will place the rest of them on the areas that are very easy to access. Of course, I am also making sure that even smaller details like a zipper teeth don't hang in the air during printing. Contrary to popular belief, I am not trying to hide the supports. I want to be able to see them and send them off completely later on during preparation of the model. So let's print this and see what we got. So, this is the initial print, or better to say, proof of concept. It's all about checking what is wrong and finding as much flaws as I can. Right away, I see that a few things broke off. I'm trying to determine the cause, is the model too thin, or if the supports are too strong. Closely inspecting the zipper teeth, I am missing some, but then again, I think it's a my fault. Same as my nonna said to me, Gino, don't eat firecrackers, but I didn't want to listen. It is probably from the handling of the model after printing, so it's my fault. Now, let's see if I can insert torso in the jackets. Let's hear if it has a nice click. Oh, I didn't hear such a nice click since Godfather. Joking aside, model married fantastically. No wiggle or any play. I will also check other parts. Oh, what is this? This is the sweet sound of fail. Layer lines that are created because of the suction forces. I will need to make a more holes behind the hair to allow better air and resin flow. Chances are that this would print well with the ACF or PFA sheet, however, my goal is to be able to print this on any functional machine. It is maybe because I am painting models, I always try to add a little something to make the life of a painter easier. I think that all the parts should have a dedicated holes for holding the models while painting, but let's see how the rest of the parts fit. Oh, fantastic! Some of the parts have to be connected in a certain order to fit them properly, like this gun, but the most important thing is that they fit properly. Of course, this model should be able to stand on its own. Oh, bravissimo! That's it for this episode. 
Thanks for watching. Only team left is to fix all the issues and optimize supports. And I'll see you next time when I will prepare a final production ready model for the painting. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe for more content. Also feel free to watch my other episodes on this channel. Ciao ciao!